Hi again, everyone. I talked about three written forms of parabola, but I actually only did the first one. This is our second one. The silly thing about this form, it's actually the same as, it's the same as writing if I expanded the brackets. I'd have x squared, I'd have minus 4x and minus 2x is minus 6x, and that minus 2 by minus 4, which is plus 8. So really, this is just one of those. But often when we give it to people in this form, people get mixed up and think, oh, it's a different question, I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, hello, let's make that be written very simply, and now it's written simply to do the rest of the question. Same things as always, we're going to let x equal naught and we're going to let y equal naught. And let's say you're not comfortable with either of those, we can learn there's a rule, and then later on sometimes you go and now understand. Just which one do you want to do first? Nah, I'm going to go x equal naught. So I'd have naught minus 2 times by naught, naught minus 4, I should say. So what have we got now? Minus 2 times minus 4, which is minus 8. So the y intercept is that. What did we put in? We put in the 0 for x, and we get a minus 8 for y. So that's if they say write it the coordinate form. And often they'll say write it its coordinates. So there it is at its coordinates. Shortcut for those who realise once you're comfortable, is you can just go minus 2 by minus 4. Oops, and they write 8. Write minus 8 instead of the plus 8. So minus 2 by minus 4 will just give us the plus 8. So what can we do next? We're back, we've done that one, now we're back to let y equal 0. So if we let y equal 0, we've got 0 equal x minus 2, x minus 4. Now I say we're creatures of habit all the time. We usually fold our arms the same way. We normally do everything, put socks on in the same order. So on this one, we're back to let it equal 0. We've already got it, we don't need fractions, and we've already got it factorised. So in this form, if we're creatures by, of habit, most people like to write that first. So it's equal naught. And now we can let x minus 2 equal naught. Why can we let that equal naught? Why do we want to let that equal naught? When you multiply two numbers that get zero, either the first one has to be zero or the second one has to be zero. You can actually get both of them to be zero. Different story when we're multiplying. But on this, if I add two to this side, add two to this side. So x equals 2, if I go back up to here, 2 take 2 would be 0. 0 times something would still be 0, so I'd have 2, 0. The other one, x minus 4 equals 0. So if I add 4 to that side, add 4 to that side, what have I got this time? I've got 4, 0. Now, the one that mucks most people up is where is the axis of symmetry. So we're now talking about the axis of symmetry. So if I started a sketch, and I sketch over here, and I have a root of 2, I've got a root of 4, and I've got a y-intercept at 0 to 8. So if I come up here to 8, I can bring my parabola down to here, and come back up to there, and there's my parabola. Of course, there's the x-axis and there is the y-axis. And I could have, been, could have been fussier and get that point there. For most people, it's really obvious that that is x equals 3. For some reason, some people really struggle with it. It's a simple rule. <coughs> it's halfway between x and z. So halfway between 2 and 4 is 3. So that's an axis of symmetry, which we call x equals 3. Now, here's one method of getting the turning point. And of course, we mean it could be a max or it could be a min. In this case, obviously, it's a min. Coordinates of the min, the old substitute. Substitute x equals 3. In other words, where is the middle? It's somewhere above or below 3. In this case, it's going to be below 3. So I've got y equals, back to here, 3 minus 2 for the substitution. 3 minus 4. Now I've got y equals 1 times minus 1, and y equals minus 1. If you look at the graph there, it's pretty obvious that it's going to be there at minus 1. So I've got 3 and minus 1. One of the things I like to draw to people's attention is if they're apart by 2, that goes down by 1. If it was upside down and we had a maximum, if they're apart by 2, it goes up by 1. 
And this applies anywhere on any parabola, as long as it's these both say this says one and that's one and that's one. That's the simplest case of a parabola. Talk about when a equals one. So go back to the basics. You do your usual, let x equal naught, let y equal naught, that will give us the y-intercepts, the x-intercepts. How do we get the axis of symmetry? Halfway between two and four, easy to see on the diagram, halfway between two and four. So there's that equation, which is x equals three. By the way, the equation is not just three. The equation is x equals three. How do you get the coordinate center of the mean? In this case, the mean or that turning point. Substitute the three back into the original equation, which is over here. And you end up with your coordinates of, we put in a three, and we ended up with a minus one. That's enough for now. Thanks.